Well, another episode of Jay Lowe's Garage Restoration Blog. People love these restoration things where we actually install things and you see how they work. Now, you might remember, if you've been to this website before, the Telma frictionless braking that we demonstrated. Remember John, the charming Frenchman that was here? And uh, Dave Kalaki, the not-so-charming American that brought the international truck by that had the unit in it. Okay, we're going to install one of those units in my 1941 American LaFrance fire truck. This is a wonderful vehicle. We use it as a rescue vehicle to pick up motorcycles and stuff when they're stranded. It's got a V12 engine in it, but it weighs about uh, six tons, eight tons, and it's got big drum brakes, which are okay, but it's nice to have a little bit of backup. And that's what we're gonna do with this Telma unit. This is, I think, one of the most innovative, yet simple ideas that I've seen in a long time. Let's meet Randy Downey. Randy, how you doing? He, you're the general manager at Telma, right? Yes, Jay. Uh, quickly, for the people who might not have seen the uh, piece we did, explain what the unit is and, and what it does. Well, Jay, the Telma unit is actually called an induction brake system. Mm -hmm. The simple name for it is electromagnetic retarder. Okay. And what this does is it actually creates uh, electrically eddy currents or in the magnetic field. So it's like two opposing mag. When, when you try to put two opposing magnets together, that's basically what happens. You can't do it, right? They fight each other. That's exactly right. What happens is these eddy currents, Jay, that uh, are created in the rotor, they're passing through the system itself, the induction system, creates a, a, a kind of force that's called Laplace. Mm -hmm. That Laplace for it is actually counteracting the rotational speed of the rotors, which creates that invisible braking force. Okay, so the rotor's going this way, and this one's essentially going the other way. Exactly. So I, I can't even do it, but you got it. Yeah. And what happens is the two, and there's no friction, there's no brake exactly. dust. Before your eyes glaze over, let me show you what, what we have here, because it's, it's pretty interesting, and it's easy to understand. This is the Telma unit right here. And this is not brand new technology. This has been around, what, 50 years? You know what's interesting, Jay, is that actually the eddy currents itself was found in 1855. Okay. And it was then patented in 1903 by a company called Stinkle. Okay. Stinkle released that to a company in 1946 by the name of Elma. Today, that's Telma. Oh, I see. And in 1949, it was commercialized. Oh, very good. Okay. Now, what we've done here, this goes, you take your drive shaft out, you essentially shorten your drive shaft by however wide this is, and you put this in between your transmission and your rear end. Now here is our uh, shortened drive shaft here. We've, we've complicated things because we've got one of our uh, gear vendors overdrive units in here, but normally this would be a straight drive shaft. We shortened the drive shaft once to put the gear vendor in, and we shortened it again to put the Telma unit in. Yes. And this doesn't affect the overdrive at all. What we had to do in this vehicle, because this is not a standard application, uh, this being a fire truck, there was all kinds of brackets, and we had a vacuum tank. We had all kinds of stuff we had to move, which you wouldn't normally do in a uh, modern vehicle. And by modern, I mean anything 1980 and forward. This, is, this vehicle is 70 years old, so it took some adapting, but not crazy. We, we made all the brackets here. So what we're going to do now is we will show you everything you need to install this. This is something uh, I guess could be done at a day at a shop, right? Or well, Jay, this is kind of a special situation. I well, mean, ours is, yeah, yeah, but I mean normally. Absolutely. We're talking about 1941. This, this yeah. fire truck's actually older than the concept of a retarder. But right. a normal installation, Jay, should be able to be done in anywhere from 18 to 16, or 8 to 16 hours. Yeah, Excuse okay. Yeah. Now, let's show you what we need. This is the Telma unit. This is your essentially, oh, was this cast iron? Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is stamped steel. Right. Okay. You've got actually cast iron that as far as the rotor, and this is a special alloy, excuse me, special alloy. Right. That allows this actually to heat up because, as you know, electricity does create right. heat. Okay. So as the unit heats, Jay, this is designed to spread from these rotors or these shoe plates here so that we never have touching components, okay? Right. So that's the design of the product. Okay. So that's basically, this is your big clump of steel part. And let's show you the hardware that goes with this. This is our electronic components here. Yeah, we've got here the harness, which is just a universal harness, Jay, that's right. used for this vehicle. This is the control box or the contact box that we use to initiate each stage. This particular retarder with the control system we're using is energized in 25% increments, okay? So one, two, three, and four, yeah. Jay. Although it looks a little complicated, it's pretty simple technology here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And this is your uh, what you read your computer with. Yeah, this is this is actually allows us to be able to take it to the next stage, Jay. Right. Read the computer, but it also allows us to be able to use the new technology today, which is multiplex. Okay. And this here 
goes on your steering column. Now, on the international harvester application that we had, it was actually on the brake itself. It was connected to the brake. I prefer this because if I want to use the brakes, I can. And you're going down the road, you touch it there, you slow down a little, a little more, a little more, and you stop. So if you're going down a hill and you want to maintain 45 miles an hour, click this to where you're doing 45, leave it there, and it'll hold you at 45. You want to go a little faster, or if you want to override it, just put it all the way up. But if you do this, you will stop just like that, and then you slow down at one or two miles an hour, then touch your brakes, and you come to a complete stop. So as I said, normally where brakes would go out, well, in commercial vehicles every 90 days, you can go four or five years. And this is, this is all you have on your steering column or on the floor, wherever you mm -hmm. want to put it. Uh, what else do we have here? Well, this is just showing that uh, simply we have the mounting bracket system and the shock mounts yeah. that allow us to be able to mount right. it to the frame, which create no vibrations. Okay, what's the next step, Randy? Well, then when we mount this unit up here, we'll attach to the uh, contactors on this side here, right. which is actually the four positions of the retarder so that we can energize it, Jay. These are the two here. These are your positive and negatives. Right. And these are your position cables from right. one through four. Right here. Yep which will then be energized by our control box, Jay, that's mounted up here on the back of the uh, frame rail here of the vehicle. All right, let's put it in. Now we've already installed the electronic components. Those are easy enough to do. It's just a matter of finding uh, a place on the body to mount them and uh, the computer units and all that kind of stuff. You just put it inside uh, some waterproof place. You can see we're putting the drive shaft in place now. Just tighten the nose up. We're tightening the drive shaft straps now on the U joints. We're finishing with the drive line. Well, as you can see, we got the unit in. Uh, it took about 45 minutes. Now, don't forget, we had measured everything and pre-cut it. We had our drive shaft made. You can't put it in in 40 minutes at your house. But once you measure everything, get the parts made. Uh, the wiring is just a matter of, we didn't really show you much on that, because it's just a matter of running the wires to the unit, however you want to do that, you can do that. Uh, we put the, the, uh, the unit on the steering column that's up there now. We showed you where our electronic box is to plug in to read it off the computer. Notice we have our, uh, by lack of a better word, skid plates, I guess. To side plates. Jeff. Side plates to protect yep. the unit. Um, and we'll, we'll take it for a ride. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a camera under here so when we're going down the road, you'll see the unit working. It's pretty cool. It's fun to take these old vehicles and use modern technology on them. You know, we've got our gear vendors overdrive, so a vehicle that was maybe a 45 or 50 mile an hour vehicle before can now cruise at 75 on the freeway. And we've got modern braking that's really safe. You know, we've got something that's essentially foolproof. If our brakes ever went out, and these are 70-year-old brakes, we've got this unit here. Uh, but now we hardly ever use the brakes at all because we're going to be using this all the time. But let's show you how it works. Come on, we'll put it on the ground. Yeah. Well, we put about... 10 people on this thing, put a little extra weight in it, see how our unit works. Right now I'm coasting. Slow, slower, and slowest. Right there, that's the most friction. It's, it's so powerful, it will stall the engine. Yes. The Telma is eliminating the heat built up in your standard, normal brake system right. and doing it all frictionless, creating no dust particulates that are dropping into the atmosphere. So in essence, we're eliminating over 20 billion, if we were using Telma on every vehicle, eliminating yeah. 20 billion tons of dust particulate in the air during a year. The interesting thing is, I gotta actually get my hand to the Telma unit quicker than I can get my foot to the brake, because a vehicle like this, you gotta lift your leg up and go over this way. This, it's right here, I just touch it, and I can slow down immediately.
don't think I'll ever go back to regular brakes again. Okay, we just pulled in. We're on the freeway. We're going 70 miles an hour. We had 10 or 11 people in this thing. We're going to put it up in the air and see how hot the brake drums are. I assume they're not hot at all because I only touched the brakes once, maybe twice at a light. Let's see what we got here. Okay, these brakes are stone cold. I mean, not warm at all. And believe me, it's only been two and a half minutes since we pulled in. We pulled in, put it right up on the lift here, and we never touched the brakes, so they never got hot. And of course, our Thelma unit. The rotor rules will be hot. Yeah, a that'll bit, be James. hot. You can feel that. There's some heat yep. there, but that's cast iron. That'll dissipate fairly quickly. And uh, well, that's that's basically it. If you're someone who tows a heavy boat, or uh, you know, or you have a truck, uh, you know, my my. Uh, my buddy was just telling me that uh, he's in Denver all the time. He's going up and down these mountains with trailers. And uh, I showed him this, and he's going to put one in his truck. So the commercial applications, and it also works for private stuff as well. So, Randy, thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate very it. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go on their website. Check it out.